So, welcome back to another episode of PCs and EVs. In today's video, we're evaluating the Comma 3 with Open Pilot. Um, currently, we're on the experimental branch, so we're on the Dev L branch of Open Pilot. Now, the Comma AI 3 is installed in a Genesis GV60, which has HDA, it's either 1 or 1.5, and we do have the Red Panda installed as well. The reason the cables are like this is because I only have it um, temporarily. Thank you so much, Synergy, for sending it over. Uh, and we're going to give I have it set so that it'll do the experimental features. So that's stop sign detection uh, as well as stop light detection. Um, so this road is 35 mile an hour speed limit. It probably won't go above 32 on it. And I, I may end up being wrong here, but I've put, you yeah, know, it was actively slowing down at 33 miles an hour. Okay, so no, I'm, I'm wrong. It is going the speed limit, mostly. Um, this is probably the only road that it'll actually do the speed limit on. Um, I've found personally that it's very, very conservative in its driving stance when in the experimental mode. So right now I have it set to a maximum of 65. It's supposed to drive what it thinks that normal humans would drive on standard roads and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it is it is hands off. Uh, I'm hoping that the light up here is gonna end up being red so that we can take a look at it and just see how it handles the light. But it's like stopping, starting, stopping, starting. I've also found that when it's decelerating, it mostly uses friction brakes. It does not use a ton of regen. Which obviously is not ideal in an electric car. So it did well with the lane dropping off of, or lane being created over there and realizing that, hey, yes, we're going straight. I mean, yeah, it does reasonably well with actually navigating lane centering and everything. It does have a limit of how turned that it can do the steering wheel. We'll be able to show that a little bit later in the drive. Uh, yeah, so here's a red light. Let's see how it handles this. Which lane is it going to choose? Okay, it'll choose this one. And it's barely going to the first detent on regen when it definitely, like if I was driving this myself, it would have gone, it would have had significantly more regen. The other big gripe I have with it is it's so slow on accelerating. This is a car that has 500 horsepower. That Civic is gapping us. It's 35 through here. I don't know why we're going so slow. It takes absolutely forever to get up to speed. And I'm sure you guys can tune that, but it, there's no way to directly tune it on the comma itself currently. Um, I feel like there should be a aggressive ch or chill um, resume to, and travel with traffic options. Yeah, we're slowing down. We're significantly far behind the person in front of us. Meanwhile, if I was using regular HDA, it accelerates relatively quickly. Admittedly, yes, I do have to either touch the pedal or go up to resume from stopped. We're going 31, it's 35. I'm going to do my best not to take over in this, um, but it is, it is infuriating how it drives. I have it set to 65 max still. No, I haven't had to touch the wheel in a while. So that's nice. Let's see how it handles this with a lane dropping off. Yeah, it handles it well. Yeah, we want to go straight. Uh, it can do lane changes, so let's indicate and then touch the wheel, and then it'll get over into the other lane. Now it's 30 through here, so it's actually going to travel a reasonable speed. Everyone travels 40 to 45 through here. Uh, my local city has very slow speed limits on side roads, and realistically most do. But average rate of travel on this is probably around 45. Hey, it knows enough to not randomly slam on the brakes for those vehicles. That's good.
All right, let us take over in a minute and we'll turn so that we can start going back the other way. And then we'll go down the curvy road that I was talking about earlier. Yeah, so it can't see over the hill, so it slows down. It shouldn't slow down. It should be able to use navigation data and be like, hey, there's probably nothing on the other side of that hill because this is a straight road. It has GPS capability. It has cellular. I mean... We're going 31 and we're about to have a Jeep pass us. That's the normal speed that everyone goes. You can see actually now that they've passed us, we're accelerating quite heavily and that's to keep up with them. It'll accelerate and try and stay in people's blind spots. I, I don't know why, but that's what it does. Okay. Let's see what it does down this very skinny road with a stop sign at the end. I will be prepared as always to take over. Um, yeah, so we wanna go that way. And it's not gonna do it. It did stop at what it thought was the stop sign. Uh, but it wasn't gonna resume on the other side of it. We're gonna get back over into this lane because we travel very slowly. Now, the non-experimental comma AI, just, which is just adaptive cruise and lane centering, absolutely amazing. Doesn't stop for stoplights, doesn't stop for stop signs, but for what it is, which is adaptive cruise and lane centering, awesome. So like if I, I can switch modes on the fly. If I switch to that, it'll instantly try and accelerate us to 65. If I switch back, it'll then probably start decelerating us after a little bit. <laughs> which, yeah, is what it is. What's it gonna do? You gotta pick a lane. All right, I'm helping you pick the, the right lane. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, s oh, okay, let's get back over this way. Will it stop for this red light? It will. Where will it stop? Is it gonna stop really early? It is. This is way too early. The stop line is right here. Okay. So I accelerated it, got it up to the stop line, and then re-engaged autopilot by uh, starting the cruise. Control. Now I can't edit the distance how far I want to be back from the person in front of me. You can't do that on the DevL branch, but you could on the regular branch with the standard comma or the standard open pilot, not the experimental. And I know, realistically I'm testing two different products, two different softwares here, but we're going 26, it's a 30. I do not want to get on the highway. It was starting to angle us over to the highway, so I definitely won't intervened to stay going straight. And you can see it actually on here, switching between the wide angle lens and the standard lens. All right, so I'm gonna take over to a little bit of driving just so we can get into where we wanna be. Yes, there's a car in my blind spot, thank you. Let's see if it's able to handle the turn. I will admit I have not tried that. It should be able to start though once the cars in front of us move. Yeah, so it just hit the maximum that it can steer. And it just takes things way too slowly. Like we should have been taking that at like 20 to 25, not 15. So yeah, my, my thoughts on the experimental branch are just definitely that it's way too conservative of a driver. We're slowing down. 
the cars in front of us are leaving us and we're slowing down. Let's switch over to the other one now and we'll get some thoughts and insights on that. So I actually, yeah, I gotta disengage it to, yeah, you can see on here, actually, how much regen we're getting. And we were not getting anywhere near that level of regen with open pilot on. Oh, Pacifica plug-in hybrid, nice. Okay, yeah, let's resume it. And because this is just lane centering and adaptive cruise, it's not aware of like the stoplights and stuff like that. So it'll just accelerate the instant I put it back on. And as you see, it has no issues accelerating in the standard mode. It actually accelerates relatively rapidly, um, especially in comparison. It accelerates at about twice the rate of the experimental mode. Okay, yeah, we slowed down because they were turning. Good job, handled that well. And now you can see the triangle, which denotes the vehicle in front of us. Um, you can see our path, which is the green line. Obviously, the white lines on the edges of it are the edges of the lane itself. Uh, wow, it handled that really well. A lot better than HDA would have. Yeah, so it, it does some things well, some things it struggles with. I mean, as with any software, the experimental mode just definitely needs a lot of work on being more assertive. Uh, you know, still can't edit it because I have the the developer branch of the OpenPilot software currently installed. On the release OpenPilot version right now, you can edit your distance from vehicle in front. How's it gonna, it's not gonna scooch at all for the person in the lane. Okay, well that's not great. Definitely could use some uh, pedestrian awareness. takes a second to realize that they're accelerating, but once it does, it's more than capable of actually re-accelerating. Which is no different than any standard adaptive cruise on any vehicle, realistically. Now, I gotta keep my eye here, because we'll probably approach the limits of what Open Pilot can do as far as the steering angle. Which, I really think they need to raise the max steering angle, even if they limit the torque that it can provide. blue Model Y with a roof rack. I've seen quite a few Teslas out and about today. So actually up here we're going to turn and I'm going to put it back in the experimental mode. And there's one turn that unless you know the road you wouldn't really get anyways. So let's flip the mode back. Uh, one thing I want to mention is sometimes when the device is powering on, it comes up and says fan malfunction. Um, and then after about three to five minutes, the notification goes away. It's just something I've run into probably three or four times. Uh, yeah, it's getting a little close to the granite curbs for my liking. There were six inch vertical granite curbs, so I don't want to hit those. And this basically, it drives as any kid on their learners would through here. Or like you would on a driving test. Slow, methodical. Uh, it's the turn up here 
right where the hill drops down, that I am going to be on the wheel ready to go. Yeah, and we crossed the double yellow, and we would have gone way across if I hadn't helped it. And then it's gonna slow down for this blind curve, which it says take control, turn exceeds steering limit. Now, when it exceeds the steering limit, you can set it to an angle, and then it'll continue to go at that angle, but it won't be nearly as aware of where in the lane it is. In my experiences, it'd still be more than willing to cross double yellows if you've set it to the steering angle, even if you've let go. So, not, not amazing, but other than some of the turning stuff, um, like this will probably throw me into a curb if I let it up here. On these back roads, it handles driving speed just fine. Now, if I were on the highway, I've found that it struggles to even maintain 55 miles an hour without another vehicle around. Like, it, it'll sit at, like, 53. And then the instant another car passes you, it'll speed up to try and stay in their blind spot, and it'll... Nope. Yeah, nope. It was about to hit the curb. So it'll try and stay in their blind spot, and then it'll speed up to try and stay doing that. And with that in mind, it'll actually also only go up to about 63 to 64 miles an hour no matter what the speed limit of the zone is and it's just not pleasant like honestly just very very unpleasant to try and be going down the highway in experimental mode obviously most people are saying that experimental mode is for city driving and the regular mode is for highway driving, which I can get alongside. They both can do lane changes on highway driving and you don't really need stop sign or stop line detection. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it handles this up here. There's an unmarked section of the road. So does it... S oh, it thinks it's one lane. Yeah, no, this is definitely handled as two lanes. And there's a stop sign here. Is it going to stop? Nope. All right. So one stop sign detection fail. Now, admittedly, the stop sign is pretty obscured, but you can definitely see it way sooner than I hit the brakes on this vehicle. Let's try going this way. Let's see if we end up stopping at this stop sign properly and then are able to resume after. I just want you guys to see how slow it is again to accelerate from a stop to going. Nope. It's because there's no stop sign here. That's dumb. There should be a stop sign there. Yeah, it's a 40 through here. We should not be going 26. Now let's circle back to where we started and then we'll go over pricing on this kit and realistically whether I'd recommend getting it for a vehicle that has HDA versus like a something like a Volt where the stock lane centering and all that is absolutely garbage um, and even some of the vehicles don't have adaptive cruise yet we're still not going 40. Um, it, I'd say it's a little bit better of a highway driver than stock HDA because it can do the lane changes. But it is much worse of a around town driver, even with being able to do lane changes because HDA is good enough where it'll yell at you significantly. Like, it'll be like, hey, yeah, this is outside my realm. Uh, but it'll try its best to handle everything. It doesn't, it, it'll steer the wheel as much as it can. It'll actually use regen, which this doesn't really seem to use. Um, and it will 
accelerate from a stop at a reasonable rate, which this really, really, really struggles with. And I just, I don't understand it. That's like the biggest gripe I have with it is that it just takes forever to accelerate from a stop. Uh, and then in the experimental mode, just takes forever or doesn't travel at a reasonable rate of speed on probably about 30 to 40% of roads, including all highways. And sure, yeah, I don't have to touch the wheel, but like I don't mind touching the wheel like that every two minutes or 30 seconds or whatever the HDA has me do. It's not been a problem. Plus, before I installed the developer branch of this, it actually yelled at me like every 10 minutes or whatever that, hey, no wheel input, or like five minutes or whatever, and said no wheel input detected. Um, and like actually actively disengaged cruise control and started slowing down on the highway and flashed a giant sign on my screen and everything, and it just was not great. So the Coma 3 250 gigabyte is 1600 bucks, which is what this is. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the Red Panda, which is this, as well as the Hyundai Harness, that was an additional 650 bucks. Would I pay 2250 for this? No. Would I pay two grand for this and put it in a bolt with no stock cruise control no adaptive cruise control that is probably i mean it's decent enough to add a feature but it is not better than it is not worth it to replace existing features um as far as so i've had some super cruise testing and it works mostly this works better than super cruise in the standard mode However, doesn't have, yeah, no, in the, in standard, not the experimental branch, it works better than Super Cruise, in my opinion. And obviously you can take this hardware with you when you sell your car and get a new car, if you ever sell your car. Um, however, if you already have Super Cruise, A, this isn't compatible, B, it's not worth spending additional money for it. Um, as far as auto versus our model wise autopilot, I'd say, yeah, this is a little bit better than autopilot in the standard mode, not the experimental, the experimental realistically, the standard mode probably gets like a seven out of 10, six out of 10, somewhere six and a half. The experimental branch gets like a three and a half to four and a half out of 10. Like, yeah, it's great. It does stop signs and stoplights but it doesn't travel down the road at a reasonable rate of speed, which is the entire point of like being in your vehicle. You want to go at a reasonable rate of speed, especially relative to other people on the road. So, I mean, over basic autopilot, yeah, it's better. Enhanced autopilot's probably better than this, but that's $6,000. Full self-drive is almost definitely better than this. That's $15,000. So, yes, this is better than Tesla's paid options and their stock option but their stock option doesn't cost any money I don't even know where I'm going with this rant it's just I initially I was very on board with this product where it's like yeah it's nice to be able to just turn on your blinker and then tap the wheel and it changes lanes that's nice but all of the other drawbacks of it like cost it's for what it is, it's not that expensive, but when you're considering a lot of the vehicles that you'd put this in are somewhere around $30,000, that's 5%, um, and that just seems unreasonable to me. Now, obviously, this is something they're working on. They're updating the software relatively frequently and everything, so they may f end up fixing in the future all of my concerns with that, but it's just... I mean, the fact that it doesn't even use all of the regen that's available before using braking is nuts. It actually actively applies friction brakes before doing, instead of doing additional regen, especially really down low. Now, would I recommend it? 
Probably not. Though, for those of you who have already bought it, yeah, it's a great product. I'd recommend it to people who don't have a, an, a stock adaptive cruise solution because this is especially not a good lane centering solution as well. It's so like this in a Ram 1500, great. This in a Bolt EV, great. This in something that already has a, lane, a good lane centering and adaptive cruise solution, it's not worth it. So just keep that in mind, guys. And I'll see you guys all again in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.